Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through an example with you in Excel that will show you how you can use the WAC approach in order to determine a firm's enterprise value which is essentially the worth of its operating assets, not the worth of its assets but its operating assets and then how you can use that to then figure out price per share or what is known as the intrinsic value of a firm's stock. So let me take you straight to the example. All right, so a lot of information given here, but basically there's a company called Clay Times and it's thinking about expanding its ornament store into Northwest. Uh, and it's considering the purchase of a privately held company called Harry's Pottery Supplies. Uh, Clay Times currently has debt outstanding with a market value of 135 million and a yield to maturity of 5%. We're told the company's market capitalization is 390 million. So this is the worth of its equity. Market cap is worth of equity. And the required return on equity is 11%. So this is also basically the cost of equity. Harry's uh, currently has debt outstanding with a market value of 55 million. And next year, Harry is projecting its EBIT to be $18.4 million, which is expected to grow at 10% per year for the next five years before slowing down to 3% in perpetuity. You're given some information, networking capital, capital spending and depreciation as a percentage of EBIT. And furthermore, you're told that Harry's has 2.45 million shares outstanding and the tax rate for both companies is 21%. The question is, what is the maximum share price that Clay Times would be willing to pay for Harry's pottery supplies? Essentially, this is a question for you to determine what the worth of the company and therefore the worth of the stock is because that is the maximum that you'd be willing to pay. And the worth of the company is essentially the discounted value of its free cash flows at the weighted average cost of capital. This fundamentally is the WAC approach to valuation. WAC approach to valuation essentially says that if you want to value a company or if you want to figure out the enterprise value, then you should first figure out the enterprise's free cash flows or financial cash flows. And there's a formula for that. And then once you have the free cash flows or the financial cash flows, you want to discount them at the weighted average cost of capital. Now for that, typically you need the cost of capital of the company that you are about to acquire. In other words, what's the target company, which in this case is Harry's Pottery Supplies. But the information that we are given on cost of debt and cost of equity is not for Harry's Pottery Supplies, it's for Clay Times. In such an instance, we can make the assumption, although this assumption would not be true in every case, is that because Clay Times and Harry's Pottery Supplies are in the same industry, they would have a similar cost of capital. Again, this is a simplification. We would ideally need data to figure out Harry's Pottery Supplies weighted average cost of capital. But in this case, we don't have that information. So we are going to calculate clay times whack and then use that as a proxy for Harry's pottery supplies whack. And when we will have those two data, the financial cash flows and the weighted average cost of capital, we are going to discount the cash flows at the weighted average cost of capital to figure out the enterprise value. And from there, I'll show you how you can figure out the price of the stock as well. So here is how I'm going to proceed. First, I'm writing down all the inputs that are given to me. My goal is to figure out the enterprise value. From there, I'll show you how you can get the equity value and how from there you can get the share price of Harry's Pottery Supplies. So the first order of business is to figure out the weighted average cost of capital. Fortunately, that's very easy to do in this case because we are told that Clay Times has debt outstanding with a market value of 135 million. So debt is basically 135 million and market cap is 390. So the total of debt and equity is basically 135 plus 390. And so debt ratio is debt in relation to this total. If you do that math, you get 25.71. So simple as that. To calculate WAC, we basically do equal to the debt ratio, which is, we've just calculated 25.71%, multiplied by the cost of debt, which is the yield to maturity, which is given 5%. And we further need to multiply it by one minus the tax rate, because we always consider the after-tax cost of debt in the WAC calculation. 
the tax rate is given 21 percent so this is one part of it and then we're going to add the equity portion which is going to be one minus debt ratio and that times the cost of equity which fortunately we were also given cost of equity is given as 11 percent and so this calculation is fairly straightforward if you do this math you get 9.19 percent and we're going to work with the assumption that while this is a clay times whack we can use that as a proxy for harry's pottery supplies whack as well so now we go for our estimate of financial cash flows and i have uh, already done this math for you basically financial cash flows are ebit into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation which gives us operating cash flows and then you subtract capex and you subtract changes in networking capital so for example we were told that in year one, our EBIT is going to be 18.40 million. We were told that, we were further told that this number is going to grow at 10% for the next five years. So this is how I am projecting EBIT. I'm subtracting taxes based on the tax rate that is given to get EBIT that is net of taxes. I'm adding depreciation, making note of the fact that we were told that depreciation is gonna be 8% of EBIT. So I do that for all the years. And then for operating cash flow, I simply add that number. CapEx and changes in networking capital are two other numbers that we are told are a certain percentage of EBIT. So we calculate those here and here. And this gives us financial cash flows as operating cash flow minus CapEx minus changes in networking capital. Now, this calculation only gives us financial cash flows for the first five years, but the firm continues to exist after year five. Why? Because we are told that the growth rate after five years is going to be 3% forever. That sounds like a growing perpetuity. And in order to determine the worth of all the cash flows that are going to exist beyond year five, we basically calculate that present value right here. So that in finance is called a firm's terminal value. And the way to calculate that is we take our next year cash flow, which in our case is going to be year six cash flow, which essentially is year five cash flow right here into one plus the growth rate, right? Because year six cash flow is just going to be 3% higher than what we have today. So this entire thing is next year cash flow. And then we divide by R minus G, where R is our discount rate, which we just calculated, that's our WAC, minus the growth rate, which is 3%. So when we calculate terminal value, we are essentially calculating the present value of all the cash flows that are going to lie beyond year five. So if somebody asks you, what is the worth of the company, or what are you getting at the end of year five, you're going to say, well, I'm directly getting these cash flows and the worth of the assets that I own at this point is this. So financial cash flows with terminal value are all these cash flows. And then at the end of year five, you're getting the sum of these two numbers. We're not done because our job was to figure out the worth of the enterprise at this point, time period zero. But now that task is rather easy because all you gotta do is just discount these five years worth of cash flows, including the terminal value, just five years back at WAC. And so enterprise value is simply equal to NPV at what rate? My WAC, which is calculated 9.19%. The values that I'm going to discount are all these numbers right here. And so lo and behold, it is 235 point nine four million this is the worth of the entire enterprise so in order to go from enterprise value to share price you first need to ask yourself well if the entire enterprise is worth 235.94 million what is the worth of the equity because remember enterprise which includes all assets it's funded with debt and equity so the equity value is simply whatever is the worth of all the assets which is enterprise value minus the worth of all the debt. And that we know for Harry's pottery supplies is given equal to $55 million. So we can take our enterprise value and subtract from this number, the 55 million, that gives us the worth of the equity, which is about $181 million. This is the worth of the total equity. So the worth of all the shares outstanding, which means that if we wanna figure out what this value implies for the value of each share, all we have to do is take this number, which is 180.94, and divide 
by the total number of shares outstanding. That information is given to us as well, $2.45 million. And so when we do that math, we get $73.85. This is the maximum that Clay Times would be willing to pay for each share of Harry's Pottery Supplies. There is a second part to this question which says that uh, the CFO of Clay Times, let's suppose, feels that Harry's terminal value should be calculated using a terminal value to EBITDA multiple of nine. How would your valuation change as a result? What that means is that instead of calculating terminal value in this fashion, where we are saying that beyond year five, cash flows are going to grow at this constant 3% rate in perpetuity, what if the CFO feels that at this time, at time period five, the company is going to be worth nine times its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. This is a common way in which terminal value is calculated as well. You basically make a projection about what your company is going to be worth at the end of a certain time period, in this case, year five, as a multiple of some number. It could be sales, it could be earnings before interest and taxes or EBIT. It could be EBITDA. In this case, it's EBITDA. And what that really means is that all you got to do is simply change this terminal value to equal to nine times whatever it is that you're expecting your EBITDA to be. Now, there is no specific row here which shows your EBITDA, but EBITDA is essentially EBIT plus the depreciation. So all you got to do is take your EBIT number in this case, which we have 26.94 and add the depreciation number which is 2.16 so this is your EBITDA and all you're saying is that you're expecting your terminal value number to be nine times this number that's it it will change your terminal value number obviously and because it will change this last cash flow it will change your measure of enterprise value as a result the worth of equity and as a result the maximum that you're willing to pay for the company on a per share basis. So there you have it, a simple numerical example to show you how you can calculate the worth of an enterprise using the weighted average cost of capital valuation approach. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.